and this video we're going to be covering enums. So we've already covered structs and classes and now we're going to move on to something that you will probably be, be using for states uh, pretty often. So currently what I've done is I've just included person.h, our previous person class. I cleared it out entirely so it's just the class and the constructor and nothing more. That is it. So now to give an example of an enum. So here I'm using an MI weapon base class right here to use as IDs. So I have one for the 1911, the M1 carbine, and the STG44. I also have an enum for the hit location and this makes it a lot easier than using you know just simple values like 0, 1, 2, 3, so I would use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and it's a lot easier to keep track when I can just compare okay does hit location equal none does it equal head does it equal neck chest or abdominal it's a lot easier to use actual names than just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and trying to remember those and Unreal Engine also makes a good use of this by uh, let me check the animation blueprint and I'll show you what I mean here it is go back to the anim graph so here is pretty much the enum so if I get a care weapon ID the animation I'm setting that somewhere Why are we setting that? Okay, I'm being completely blind here. Oh, yeah, I overlooked it. So, current weapon ID. So, here I have get weapon ID, which is that enum right here. This one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to perform a switch on it in Blueprint. And as you can see, I have three outputs, 1911, M1 Carbine, and STG44, just like shown right here. So it has several uses, and Blueprint is heavily one of those. So I want to go ahead and cover it real quick. So we're going to do enum. Then we want to give it a name. So I'm going to do current player state. And then enums can also have a type. So I want to choose the name current player state because I want to look at this from a game perspective. So I want to have three states, alive, dead, and spectator. And those will be, we'll use the enum to kind of drive a specific variable that can pertains to this. So we're going to, because we're going to just be getting, yeah, sorry, because we're just going to be using zero, one, and two, we can use previous data types that I talked about in video one, which is a uint 8 or a unsigned char. And that gives us values from 0 to 255. So we're going to do unsigned char as the type. And then for the syntax, we just opening and closing brackets and a semicolon. So now we can do what we want. So I want to do Let's see, spectator as the first, so spectator equals zero, then let's do alive equals one, and dead equals two, and they are all separated by commas. So the last one does not have a comma. So now we can set a default, I want to change this to a, now we'll leave it. So now we can set it as a default value inside a person. But first we need to actually create a variable for this. So I'm just going to leave it public because for the sake of accessing it easily. So we're going to do current player state. Let's do current state. And current state equals current player state colon colon. And now we have access to the three values. So by default, I want it to equal a spectator. So now what we can do is we can change it 
to kind of be whatever we want. So let's do a stdc out. Enter one if player is alive. Two if player is dead. Like so. Now we're just going to have a variable here. So int value zero by default. So sin to get the input and value to be the variable we're storing it in. Let's create a person object. And let's do person dot, or better yet, switch, bring back the switch statement, value. In case it is one, we're going to do person dot current state equals current player state alive. And then we're going to break. If it equals two, we're going to set it to equal dead. And we're going to break. And by default, we're just going to set it to spectator, even though that it already is set to spectator. Anyhow, now we want to go ahead and print that out. So we're going to do current state person dot current state. Now we won't see the values like we do inside a blueprint where you know you can see the names and stuff. We'll see them as 0, 1, and 2. So if I choose 1 for is player alive, prints out well, some weird value, but we can do comparisons and stuff like that to better show what I mean. So if person dot current state equals current player state alive, run out to the console, player is alive. Else, if current player state equals dead, player is dead else player is spectator and I'm going to comment out the current state print so now we should see what it actually is so one player is alive two player is dead and anything else player is spectator because it's reverting back to kind of its default it's not doing anything. So as you can assume, well tell, you can easily do these comparisons here, which is a lot easier than doing, you know, player current state equals one, player current state equals two, which will do the exact same thing. So one, player is alive, two, player is dead, and whatever, player is spectator. So instead of doing, you know, just numbers and trying to remember and keep track, we have clear actual words that we can use instead. And that's what makes this... I don't know why you're complaining. That's a weird IntelliSense thing. Anyhow, so that's the big use of enums. And in Blueprint, as you saw earlier from the Animation Blueprint Switch statement, they become much more useful. As you can actually see the names and everything due to their reflection and choose which and what you want to do with whatever one it is. And that's why I highly recommend you learn this and get comfortable with enums because you will want to use them in correlation with, well, in cooperation with Blueprint. They, it becomes very powerful that way. Oh. Hopefully this kind of made some sense as to what enums are and how to use them and all that. So I hope it was useful because next up we're going to be learning pointers and pass by reference. So hopefully that will clear even more stuff up because pretty much everything that you're going to be doing inside of, actually I'll leave those up, inside of Unreal Engine is going to be a pointer. So every single class thing you have is going to be a pointer. And I'll try to do my best to explain what exactly pointers are. So these I'm just creating 
well, before. This is just a normal object. Whereas if I come over here and I show you how I created it in my character base, right here, go to our weapon. I create this as a pointer and I will show you why. So I'll have to see you in the next one for that. As always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description. And if you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find my Discord down there as well, and I'll try to answer any questions that you have. So, take care.